In this Learn Electrics video, we will look at the wiring method of the Y-Plan central heating system. A previous video looked at the wiring methods adopted for the S-Plan system. The Y-Type system remains a very common system. Many millions of them have been installed over the years and you will come across them often. It uses only one three-port valve comprising one inlet and two outlets. The system will allow for hot water heating and room heating together or individually. This is the basic wiring drawing for a Y-type system. Always check with the manufacturer's drawings for the actual system being worked on. But if you follow this video, you will be well on your way to understanding any variations that you might come across. They all follow the same basic method. We have our 240 volt input and some drawings will show this as 230 volts, it's the same. There's the wiring centre in the middle of the drawing and this acts as the connection point for the other components. We have the programmer controller that provides the changeover timing for the on and off periods. There's a room thermostat and a hot water thermostat, boiler connections and a supply to the pump. And not forgetting the three port valve at the top that directs the flow of water around the system. The three port valve has a common input port marked AB. In a no power switched off state, an internal spring will hold the valve in the port B open position. And it will be useful to remember this when we look at the circuit operation. Port B output is for the hot water heating and the port A output is for the central heating. And of course, we can have the valve set so that both port A and port B are open at the same time. The valve will normally come with a five wire lead attached to it. Blue is neutral, green and yellow is the earth or CPC wire. The white input wire will be at 240 volts when the central heating is calling for heat. It is important to understand the grey wire's function. When the grey wire is at 240 volts, this is telling the valve that hot water heating is not required. And more on this soon. The orange wire is an output. If the white wire input and the grey wire input are both at 240 volts at the same time, then the orange wire will output 240 volts. Let's take a simple look at how the various parts function. What do we expect them to do at different times? And we've already looked at the three port valve. First, let's look at the wiring centre, the terminal strip. Some will use just eight terminals, others will use ten, and we will see why shortly. In this video, if a terminal is energised, we will show the terminal screw as red. This will help with fault finding, but do remember to take suitable safety precautions when live testing. If you put your voltmeter into this red terminal, you should read 240 volts or thereabouts with the reference to the neutral. If the terminal is not energised, the terminal screw is shown as orange and a meter reading should give you close to zero volts. The wiring that is energised will also be shown in red. The room thermostat is shown as a three terminal device. Of interest to us are the L and SL terminals. If the room or zone is up to temperature, then the switch will be open. L and SL will not be in the closed position. When the room temperature falls below the set temperature, or someone turns the thermostat up to a higher setting, the contacts will close. L and SL will be in the closed position, allowing current to flow through the switch. Up to temperature, switch open. Below set temperature, switch closed. The thermostat in the hot water cylinder works in a different way. It has three terminals and all three terminals are needed. When the hot water is up to temperature, the C or common terminal and two are closed. If the water temperature is below the set value, the switch changes position and the common is connected to terminal one. Up to temperature, C and two connected. Below set temperature, C and one connected. The programmer timer and clock have changeover switches that allow us to set the on and off times for the hot water and central heating. In the off cycle periods, 
240 volts is on programmer terminal number 1, forcing the hot water off. More on this soon. When the programmer is cycled on, the hot water and or the central heating switches change over depending on how the programmer is set. This will enable the hot water and or the central heating, but the boiler will not turn on until one or other of the thermostats calls for the boiler to be on. The boiler and the pump work in unison with each other. If the boiler is off, the pump will also be off, as shown in the blue box. The green box shows the boiler enabled. 240 volts appears on the SL terminal and switches the boiler on. An internal connection in the boiler feeds 240 volts to the pump and the pump starts. Some boilers have an overrun facility. When the boiler turns off, the pump continues to circulate water for a few minutes to allow the hot water in the system to cool slightly, thereby avoiding heat damage to sensitive parts. Some boilers don't have this, and we will look at this on a later slide. We can follow the wiring through the system now and see what happens as the thermostats operate. This is our starting position. The circuit is off, no power applied. The two thermostats are shown in the up to temperature positions. This is a good diagram to become familiar with before we start applying power and activating different parts of the system. As we mentioned earlier, in this state, the spring inside the valve will open output port B. Now we can apply power by turning on the FCU or spur to the system. In this state, the 240 volt terminal in the programmer is live and this passes 240 volts to programmer terminal number 1. 240 volts goes through the programmer switches to wiring centre terminal number 7 and then to the valve. Because 240 volts is on terminal 7 and from there along the grey wire, hot water heating is disabled. From 7, the 240 volts also goes to terminal 2 on the hot water thermostat, through the contacts to the common and back out to terminal 6 on the wiring centre. From 6, it goes back to the programmer on terminal 3, but this does nothing. Terminal 2 in the programmer is also at 240 volts, but this goes nowhere and is only useful when fault finding. What happens if the water thermostat changes over whilst the programmer says water off? We still have 240 volts on programmer terminal number 1 and this supplies 240 volts onto wiring centre 7 and from there along the grey wire which means that the hot water is not enabled. Now the programmer changes state to hot water only. If the water is already up to temperature what happens next? Programmer terminal 3 is at 240 volts and this puts 240 volts onto wiring centre number 6 terminal. From 6, the 240 volts goes down to the water thermostat at C, through C onto 2, and back up to 7 at the wiring centre. This puts 240 volts on the grey wire to the valve and signifies hot water not required. From 7, it also goes back to the programmer, but this is of no consequence. So nothing happens, no hot water heating. At some point, the water temperature has dropped. The water thermostat has changed contact positions. Common is now connected to 1. The 240 volts on C passes to terminal 1 and back up to wiring centre number 8. Through 8 to the boiler and turns the boiler and pump on. Because terminal 2 in the water thermostat is not connected to C, it loses the 240 volts and as a result, Wiring centre 7 falls to 0 volts and this enables the valve to connect AB to B and permits water flow to heat up the water cylinder. Now the programmer selects hot water and central heating. The hot water heating is already enabled as the water thermostat is connecting C and 1 so what happens to the central heating? With the room up to temperature and the thermostat in the open position 240 volts flows from programmer number 4 terminal to wiring centre terminal number 4 and then down to the L terminal on the room thermostat where it stops. The central heating is not enabled. Later, the room thermostat changes position and connects L to SL. The 240 volts at L passes to SL 
and back up to the wiring centre terminal number 5 and along the white wire to cause the valve to allow heating water to flow through the output port A as well as B. Wiring centre terminal 8 is already holding the boiler and pump in the on position. If the hot water now reaches temperature, the water thermostat will change and connect C to 2 and from 2 the 240 volts goes to terminal number 7 on the wiring centre and indicates to the valve that hot water is not required and output port B closes. But the room is still below temperature. It needs the boiler to stay on. So, because the grey wire on 7 and the white wire on 5 are both at 240 volts, the pump sends 240 volts back down the orange wire to terminal number 8. From 8 it goes back up to the boiler, turns the boiler on and the boiler turns the pump on. So now we have the central heating being heated but not the hot water. If the programmer now changes so that only central heating is selected we will have exactly the same setup as the previous slide. Programmer terminal 1 is water off and this puts 240 volts onto terminal 7 and the grey wire to the valve indicating hot water heating not required and 240 volts goes up the white wire from terminal number 5. White and grey, both at 240 volts at the same time, means that the orange wire is supplied with 240 volts. This goes to terminal 8 and then to the boiler and the boiler turns the pump on. Some wiring centres are supplied with and use all 10 terminals in the wiring centre. If there is no pump live or PL connection on the boiler, then we may have to energise the pump from the wiring centre. In this example, we will link terminals 9 and 10 to terminal 8 and use these for the boiler and the pump separately. This is shown on this slide. The orange wire goes to terminal 8, this is linked to 9 and then to 10. 9 goes to the boiler and 10 goes to the pump. One disadvantage of this method is that there is no overrun for the pump. What are some of the problems that might be encountered? Loose wiring or terminal screws, especially after maintenance work. Thermostats may fail in the permanently open or closed positions or just be intermittent in operation. Or the wrong type of thermostat replacement might have been fitted. And the three-port valve can fail electrically and or mechanically. Understanding which terminals that should have 240 volts on them and which ones change over when the thermostats are operated will help with fault finding. Always practice safe working and safe isolation and only use live testing if you are competent at live testing and take suitable precautions. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated and we hope that you found this video useful. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.